Hi everybody, Chris Petri. I'm really excited to share with you this video. We've had so much fun putting together this video that actually I think you're really going to love it. You're going to actually actually have a great time following along with us here as we go on a great journey of actually going out and doing some plein air painting on location close by my house in the New Jersey shore where I live, close by to Fairlawn, New Jersey where I live. The shore is only about 45 minutes from my house, half an hour, 45 minutes drive. And we're going to create this wonderful painting. We're going to do a beautiful mansion along the ocean with a, with rocks along the ocean here, the beautiful uh, retaining wall along this uh, uh, property here. We're going to have sand and grass and weeds and beautiful pine trees and bushes and trees and a gazebo and the beautiful mansion and the roof and the stone chimney and the gorgeous ocean water in the distance here with some distant trees and a beautiful sky. We're going to create all this uh, in a really logical uh, step by step basis, and we're gonna. This is just I'm showing you the finished painting, so this will will be the final finished painting you will see and you will create at the end of the video. Um, so by the time we're all completed here, you're gonna have this painting completed. Uh, the first thing I wanted to say is this is the sketch that we got when we were out in the field. Look how great that looks. Rocks, the same scene. That's the same scene. The rocks, the beautiful mansion here with the trees gorgeous chimney on the house and the gazebo here along the ocean, the coastline here. So this is the painting we got out live on location. And you'll see me paint this one as well as the one we just looked at. You'll see both of these painted live here on this video. And then also I just wanted to cover one quick thing is if things happen uh, in our lives, for some reason, something goes wrong, we don't have to worry about it. Good things always come of it and we adapt and we change and we pivot and we wind up, things get better and we find something even better that happens in our lives. And that's what happened. I had my air conditioning unit break in my studio and now I'm in a, the process of a, renovating my studio because I had to move all of my art table and my YouTube setup. I had to move everything away from the walls where the air conditioning unit is so the people that work on the air conditioning can come in and work and they're not here yet. They're so backlogged because they're doing so much work. So here I am. I have no studio basically for the last like month or two because I can't get anybody in here to fix it. So I've got to wait two months until they can come fix it. So what did I do? I went out and bought a GoPro camera and I said, you know what, I'm going to use this GoPro camera and do some outdoor painting while I'm waiting for my air conditioning to get fixed. And then this turns out that it's a great thing because we're going to have a great time creating outdoor paintings. You're going to see the thing, the whole, <laughs> the whole enchilada, the whole kit and caboodle of how we're going to get all of this done in this video. So let's, I just wanted to show you a quick synopsis of what we're going to do on this video, just so you know that it's going to be very much like our normal videos that we do all the time here. I'm not really changing a whole lot. The only thing I am changing is, as you can see here, I'll show you step by step how we're going to create this video, which is a little bit different. So basically what we'll do is, you just saw the outdoor, uh, you just saw the, the finished painting. Now the next thing we're going to do, in about 30 seconds, you're going to see for 10 minutes, for 10 minutes you're going to see how I put all of my outdoor painting gear together. So you're going to see all the gear I use to go out and do outdoor painting, including my GoPro, new GoPro camera, which I just have for the first time. And we're going to bring this out with us to film the whole thing. Then second thing we're going to do, you're going to see the shore location that we're at right along the ocean and the coast. You're going to see two minutes of just the surroundings. So for two minutes, I'll take just to look around the surroundings, just so you don't think I'm going to spend five hours looking at uh, the ocean and, and, you know, trees and beautiful houses and things like that. We're just going to spend two minutes looking around. Then after that, we're going to do the pencil drawing for about five or six minutes of the actual location. You're going to see me with my new GoPro camera sitting there. You'll see my pencil drawing live as I do it right in my lap on my sketchbook. Then after that, you'll see the quick sketchbook painting. So we're actually going to, you'll see this sketchbook painting right here as I paint it right in my lap with my GoPro camera focused on the painting itself as we're doing it. And then next we do a quick one, you know, just a one minute painting. Uh, one minute video, I should say, of me driving. So I want you to see a little bit of what the highways look like and the roads look like around where I live in New Jersey here in, in the United States. I, so just for like about 30 seconds, 60 seconds, you'll see some of the buildings and the roads and the beautiful trees in the shore area where I painted this beautiful painting. You'll see just about one minute of that. Then after that, you'll see the whole 
studio painting that we just created, which is this painting here. You'll see how we created this in our normal fashion where you're going to see the palette, the painting, and I'll also have my cell phone with the subject matter. So I'll have this actual mansion on my phone set right here so you can see that while we're working and we'll kind of do our normal process of painting in the studio. So basically this is a fast moving video, lots of exciting information. And to be honest with you, it's probably uh, just a notch above what we do normally because it's a little bit of excitement, you know, it's a little bit of excitement. We're going out and we're going out and doing, you know, an excursion out and by the, you know, the coast, the ocean, we're going to see some cool things like that and bring that energy back into the studio and then create this painting. So I hope you'll enjoy this video. And again, please thumbs up if you like this video. If you want to see more videos like this, I will absolutely do more. And I plan to just do more uh, videos like this anyway, uh, alongside the other videos that I normally do on, an, on a consistent basis anyway. So, but again, something, uh, you know, a little bit negative happened. My air conditioning broke in my studio. And now it turned out to be a good thing because now we can go out and get some information, some planar painting started, go out into the outdoors, get the energy of the outdoors with us, and we'll have a fun time. All right, so I hope you'll enjoy this video. And let's get started with going over what I use when I go out, plain air painting, all my gear, my complete setup for going out doing outdoor plain air painting just next. Hey everybody, it's Chris Petri. Welcome. Thanks so much for coming by the studio. We're actually just going to get started with a great video. You can have a lot of fun here with me. We're actually going to do a road trip today and do some plein air painting down the uh, New Jersey shore. I live in Fairlawn, New Jersey and not too far from my home in the USA here. We have uh, beautiful um, ocean coastal areas. We also have mountains just about 15, 20 minutes north of where I live. So we, we're going to do some more of these uh, plein air painting uh, videos. I hope you like them and I'm just going to do them once in a while and everyone's going to let me know. Give me a thumbs up if you really like this video. Uh, leave comments in the comment section, suggestions or how you thought, what you thought about the video overall. But we're going to probably take the next hour and just do a little bit of a different format for right now. But I'm going to stick with my normal format that I always do um, on this channel. The only thing is I'm just going to add some things in uh, at this point now and maybe do a couple new things just to see how they work out because I think I'd like to do a little more plain air painting myself and I'm hoping you would like to do the same. So what we're going to do is I'll just cover with you um, what I actually um, bring with me when I'm out uh, painting outdoors. So in no particular order, I have, um, I always like to have a sketchbook for just drawing, uh, ink pen drawing, pencil drawings, and uh, they're just great. You can do studies of anything if you're on vacation, weekend getaways, so on and so forth, or just even a day trip, or if you even travel somewhere local, or even sometimes I paint outdoors right in my backyard here in New Jersey. I just put a little table out with a flower, a vase of flowers and some, you know, maybe uh, some fruit, some vegetables on there, you know, make a little still life set up. So that's always great. But this is really, I always have one of these in my backpack or my bag. I have a few different bags. I have like a duffel bag I use sometimes. And then I also have a leather bag, which is a little smaller, but pretty much either my le leather bag or my duffel bag. I can get all the gear I'm going to be showing you right now uh, as we go. Uh, just, you know, make, this is very sensible. Have your cell phone at all times uh, with you when you go on your plein air painting. You can take pictures of the areas you're drawing and painting. So that's really valuable. Also, too, you know, it's just a great valuable tool to, ha tool to have with you, it, your cell phone and maybe an extra battery. Or uh, nowadays they sell those little uh, juice packs that you can plug your phone into and maybe you can plug your, you can uh, juice up your phone maybe two or three different times. So you always have plenty of power. And that's always, I have my cell phone with me. And then also, too, I, this is a larger Canson uh, watercolor sketchbook with wa really good watercolor. This is the best sketchbooks I found shopping locally and even online. The Canson wire-bound um, watercolor sketchbooks. They're fantastic. Um, again, I bring them all the time whenever I'm out doing outdoor painting. You can get some great results. The paper's beautiful. And so that's what I bring that always with me. Um, maybe let's do some, another quick, uh, a hat and sunglasses, protect your eyes. I have prescription sunglasses and I have prescription glasses. Of course I wear, so I have to have prescription sunglasses, but keeps the sun off your eyes when you're outdoors, protects the eyes. A hat protects the face a little bit. Also keeps the sun off your eyes when you're painting and drawing and looking at your subject matter when you're outdoors. Great to have that. Um, very, very important things to have. Maybe, maybe not so much that. 
you bring sunscreen too. Sunscreen's a great thing to have uh, for your hands, your arms, your face, and so forth to protect yourself from the sun. It's uh, a great thing to do. And then uh, let's see what else we have here. Maybe we'll do some more brushes. I have, um, incidentally, all these items that I do have with me that I bring in my plain air kit or my bag. I have a duffel bag, of course. All these things stay in my duffel bag except the, the paints. These paints I leave in my studio and I use these all the time. But I have also a bag of paints, two bags actually, my cool colors and my warm color paints. So I break them down into two different bags. These are the ones that I'm always looking at and taking from when I'm doing my videos and whenever I'm painting at my uh, studio here. So, and then I throw these in the, my duffel bag when I'm ready to go. But everything else stays in the duffel bag so you never have to be scrambling around trying to find things when you want to go out and do some outdoor painting. That's the key. Try to have everything, like extras of everything, so you can have a kit prepped, ready to go. And then this way you never, again, don't you don't have to go searching around to find things. You'll have it all right there, what you need when you're ready to go out and do a little bit of outdoor painting, no matter where you're going to go. Uh, again, I was going to say these are the brushes. I have the Escoda Travels brushes. These are fantastic. They work great. All different sizes. So no matter what size painting you're going to create, you have all your brushes right there ready to go. And they, um, they're they uh, safe inside these metal brass tubes. So when you're done painting, you can just put them back into the uh, tube, close the tube, and then there's a little hole in the top which lets air in to dry out the brush. So when you're done painting, you rinse your brush off, put it in your um, into your uh, paint uh, brush holder, your uh, paintbrush holder, and then that's it. You put it in back in the case and you don't have to worry about it. You can throw this again into the duffel bag and you don't have to worry about it. Everything dries out nice and you're ready to go for the next time, whether it's two weeks, a month, a year, whatever it is. Uh, next is, um, I have always keep a zippered pouch. This is great to have. Again, this always stays in my bag. I don't take this out. When I come home, I leave it all with all these other items. Uh, this is just basically my pens, pencils, pens, Sharpie markers, uh, a kneaded eraser, extra leads for my mechanical uh, pencils. So this is, again, great to have. All packed, ready to go. Stays in my duffel bag. So when I'm ready to rock and roll and get out there and do some painting outdoors, this is all, my gear is all ready to go. I'm not wasting time. This is some artist tape, of course. You know, always bring that. It's good to have. Um, we also have, uh, of course, you have to have this, the water bucket. Water container, collapsible. These are really nice. They expand. This is a Holbein, Holbein uh, collapsible water container. When you're done and empty out the water at the end of the session, you just collapse it. And I put that in a bag too. So I have another plastic bag for these other items here. Uh, a spritzer bottle. Good to have. You spritz your paints. Uh, the only thing I think I, I have a palette. Well, you see in all my palettes, I usually keep one of my palettes. Usually my brass, my really, really small brass palette, which you've probably seen on my channel. If not, you'll eventually see it watching my videos. I usually keep that in a small plastic bag and I keep that in my fridge in my studio. And then when I'm ready to go out, I just grab my palette. Essentially, I just grab my palette and my paints and then the rest is all sitting in my duffel bag. And what else? Uh, tissues and paper towels. We always use these on an everyday basis when we're painting. So that's just another kneaded eraser in a plastic case to keep it nice and moist. Good to have an extra eraser. And what else do we have? I think we've covered everything. So that's really my essential kit for outdoor painting. That is everything there. I have a lawn chair. It's a um, McLaren uh, Gadabout chair. You can kind of see it here in the picture. This is a, uh, these are on eBay. Uh, you could get it at the, um, the European eBay site. You'll find these on, on, on the European uh, eBay site used. I don't think you can buy these new anymore. I think they're, they don't make them anymore, but these are incredibly comfortable chairs. They cradle your body when you sit in them. It keeps your knees up on a little bit of a uh, upper, uh, keeps your, it keeps your legs on an angle so that when you have your um, sketchbook on your lap, it stays at an angle, perfect for drawing and painting. And then again, I also forgot to mention, I do, um, I usually wear an apron when I'm outdoors painting. So this way I can keep my clothes a little bit, uh, you know, safe from paints splashing on them and things like that. Um, and then I also have usually some, uh, there's a small piece I have here in my studio, but uh, this is a drawer liner. It's kind of like that cushiony, rubbery grip, grip, you know, it's kind of got a grip to it. 
I always have a, this with me when I paint outdoors. And what I do is I put on my apron and then I take this and drop this on top of my apron. And then I put my sketchbook on top of that. And this way my sketchbook does not move around at all when I'm drawing and painting. So it stays still and stable on my lap while I'm painting and drawing. And that's the key. And you'll see that in just a few minutes. We're actually going to take again a trip down to the coast nearby my house just in about two minutes. And we'll put, take all this gear with us and we're going to go out and we're going to do a little bit of painting. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let me know again in the comment section if you do like this video, a thumbs up. If you're just joining along, it's probably a really exciting kind of video. Uh, usually we're just in the studio, which is fun. You, you, we're really keen in on our, our paintings and our drawings and like almost a classroom experience. But, but when we're outdoor painting, it's going to be a little different, but it's going to be interesting anyway. So again, uh, content's not going to change on my channel. I'm just introducing a few new things. And this plein air series I'm going to do maybe over the rest of the summer here in the United States, maybe I'll go out and do another three or four of these type videos and just mix them in you know, from the next two or three months as we're going. So I hope again, you enjoy this uh, very much. And uh, thanks again for watching all the time. And uh, really, it's great to work with you all. And um, we'll see you in just a second. All right, we are here, we're down the shore. We're in Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey, and you can see the ocean here. Got plenty of sand, a little bit of a uh, stream running through here from the ocean. And then we're going to look at that distant, uh, it looks like a, a large house. It's got a, you can see it's got a red roof and a chimney, and there's a couple other houses there in the distance, and there's some docks there some beautiful stone walls there's looks like some pretty good uh, atmosphere here we could actually do some painting so I'll just do a basic sketch in this location and then uh, with uh, maybe a little bit of watercolor paint just to get some colors and then we'll bring it back to the studio but it's nice just to get out here and take a look around and see the the atmosphere over here looks like there's a restaurant and there's a ferry I think that goes to uh, New York City from here so you can kind of see all the surroundings. There's some apartment buildings and condominiums around here. So this is kind of nice down here. So we'll, uh, I'm gonna stop the tape now and just so you can kind of see what I'm looking at here and what I'm gonna try to use as some inspiration and in some uh, interesting subject matter here along the ocean, the uh, coastal area here in New Jersey. And uh, next time, I turn on the camera, I think I'll just, uh, maybe we'll, I'll take a, just a picture of the the pencil sketch and then we'll do one more, just a quick little, you know, 10 seconds or 20 seconds of, of the painting I do, which is just going to be a quick composition of what I'm seeing here. Uh, again, a really nice, some sand, sandbar, some, a nice, uh, large uh, mansion over there with um, a beautiful rock wall, retaining wall, a jetty there. And uh, we'll see. We got some sailboats over there, people playing on the beach here, getting some sun, swimming. There's some people out there crabbing and fishing in the boats. So, fun stuff out here. All right, I'm going to be right back in just a few. All right, so actually, I bought a new gadget for my GoPro here. It's a. Um, a clip that just goes around like a um, like a tie like if I'm wearing a tie and you just clip on the camera so I can kind of see the the paper here so we can actually do a little sketching here so I'm just gonna I have my large sheet of paper here it's a sketchbook um, Canson sketchbook really nice watercolor paper I'm just gonna draw like a quick um, I think I'll just do a quick uh, rectangle here in the center of the page and I'm not too worried about making it large We're just, I'm just trying to do a sketch maybe here a little bit just a quick uh, composition so I'm going to do that uh, that uh, mansion just across the way there right on the uh, the jetty there so I'm going to just look at it and I'm going to try to start my my roof about up here like this 
And there's some trees along there, and there's actually a, a chimney that goes up here. Like so, and I'm just having a fun time doing a sketch out here. And I don't really consider myself right now trying to do a finished painting. I'm just trying to do a sketch. Have some fun taking the atmosphere as I'm going here. Always good to um, do some plein air sketching. And there's uh, quite a bit of uh, trees in front of this. Really nice. And there's some trees in the foreground over here as well, just to kind of get a few shapes of the trees in here. There's a bit of the house over here and some more trees in here. Some bushes along this foreground here. And then we have, in front of this, we have a, um, so let's say this is the eave of the roof here. And I'm hoping my battery is going to be okay and my camera is not going to overheat. If it goes off and we lose power on the camera because of overheating issues, you'll know what happened. But I'm going to try to keep it going here. So there's a small um, gazebo in, the f in front of the, the house here along the water. So I'll try to capture that there. Like this. And there's some columns here underneath. And there's some lawn here. And then I see uh, the stonework, the stone wall, the grass comes down here like so. There's some more bushes here. And then over here we have that stone wall that goes far over here. So we have that jetty here. It's all large stones, huge boulders all built up on the they're on some angles and what I'll do is I'll take pictures of this too with my uh, phone before I leave we're painting into the light the light is actually straight up overhead of us up here so you can imagine the sunlight's almost we're looking right into the sun it's pretty high up in the sky it's not midday though it's getting toward the about uh, 4 p.m. 5 p.m. time frame right now, so it's sort of setting. And so I'm just going to get a little bit of ideas here. I don't think I'll go and do every single detail I see. I'm just going to kind of get some ideas of the slope of the ground here. And then there's the sandbar over here. And then there's a dock going out this way here with some pilings like that. And I think that's all I'm going to do for the sketch. I just want to get some colors, use my paintbrush, get my paints out quick. I'll stop the tape now maybe just so we can kind of see. I'll stop the tape. I'll get all my paints out of my bag. My uh, a go bag, my leather go bag, I have all my gear in there, my water bucket, paints, brushes, and um, we'll just do a little bit of colors on here and see what uh, happens. It should be fun. so so we are back online um, I just thought I'd kind of show you the setup here so again I'm sitting in my um, really comfortable uh, gadabout chair and I have my paints here so I'm gonna open up my palette I prepped it before I came out today so I filled up all the colors and uh, so we're all set to go I have my water bucket over here on the right down here so you can see water buckets are sitting on the stones uh, there's a little bit of stuff laying around here I I just wanted to get here and get my stuff set up and start painting it's getting you know late in the day so um, it's this is a parking lot 
that I'm, I'm kind of working in right now. I'm kind of sitting at the end of a parking lot. It looks like there's some paths here right in front of me that go down to the sand uh, bars down here in this area. So seems like a perfect spot for me. I'm really lucky that I found this uh, spot, I feel. Um, so I'm not going to complain. The first location I was going to go to, actually, there was so much traffic. Um, it looked like it would have taken me two hours to get to the location once I hit the traffic right near the location, actually. So that's just a little bit of the things you deal with when you go out and do some plein air painting. That's why I don't usually have too much of a plan. I mean, I know the general area I want to go to, but I don't, you know, set my heart on one location because I know anything can come up and that's exactly what happened. I was going to try to go to an area called Sandy Hook Beach. And then when I got down to near a couple miles from there, the traffic was stopped almost bumper to bumper. So I just made a U-turn and went up north about 10 miles. So now I'm at the uh, other location here I found. I just happened to drive into a parking lot along the shore area. And this is what I found. And this is good. So I'm going to not worry about anything at this point other than let's get some paint on here. So... And I have here some tissue or paper towel. So I'm just going to look and I say that it's a really nice rusty looking color for the, uh, and I guess really what I'm doing right now is just having fun, enjoying the whole atmosphere of everything and not really worrying too much about anything else. Just having fun, get some colors on the paper for a few minutes or so. Burnt sienna, cerulean blue. I'll just get some roof colors on here. The chimney's kind of a grayish color, so I, I'll paint around that. We'll get some cerulean blue, mix that in with the burnt sienna. So I try to get some warm and cool colors, burnt sienna, cerulean blue, and this is going pretty well. I'll be happy to get the roofs of the gazebo and the house here, the mansion, and then some tree colors and some sand colors and a little bit of the stones and some ocean area, and that'll be it. I'll be heading back to the studio. See how my new camera is working. Brand new GoPro camera here. So, this might be pretty good. I didn't think I was going to be able to do much uh, work with the GoPro, but the GoPro is working great. So far, it has not shut off at all. So, it's not that hot out. It's about 75 degrees out. Nice breeze here along the water. So I'm continuing on with the roofs here. And I'll get some more cerulean blue. Looks good. Then I'll negative shape paint with some green, sap green, yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue. I'll start mixing up some, some greens and then I'll paint around these columns just to get a sense that there's some columns there. We'll get some of that warm and cool everywhere. And then we'll take some greens here. There's lots of trees over here, so. But I don't think I'm going to get too involved with that. Just let me
get some more of this. So I just want to get some tree shapes here, leaf forms. And again, I'm not going to create the whole painting. I'm just going to get a few colors down here. And I'll take some more of that burnt sienna. Just a little bit. Some more cerulean blue. A little bit of that in there too. Okay, so that's Do a couple of and don't worry if you smudge some stuff on the paper. Especially we're just doing a, a sketch here, basically a sketchbook study, so that, that should be good. some color on that chimney. Daddy. Okay, there we go, looking good. Do some stones over here. Raw umber, burnt umber, cerulean blue. And get some stone colors over here. Blue. And a little bit of the warmer colors there. Even a little bit of burnt sienna. Let's use some of that in this. Maybe some sand color over here. Okay, so some sand, some textured textures for the sand. I think I'll do just a little bit more here. Some uh, cadmium lemon yellow for some of the grass over here. I think I'm just happy getting some colors on here to work with. So when we go back in the studio and we do a finished painting, we kind of have some interesting colors we can 
work with will kind of re recall back to what when we were here and looking at the colors but I think that's pretty good sand dunes here and this is really about it and maybe a little water over here maybe some viridian green and cerulean blue A little bit of sky color. This is good to me. I'm happy with this. Again, I really just was trying to get some colors on the paper. That really is it. And just draw, you know, a basic concept of what it, the picture in front of me looks like. So obviously you can tell I didn't take hours to, to draw this. It's quick. We just worked for the, like, you know, the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And I think this is good. This will bring this back with photographs and this sketch. And we'll do this again in the studio. So um, I'll maybe do one more look around with the camera, uh, the new GoPro, and we'll... Um, uh, and then we'll head back to the studio. So we'll be back uh, to the studio in just a few, actually an hour it takes to get back. And then again, I'll just do a few more photographs of the area here and pictures and some, uh, some more video.
All right, we are ba we're back from the field. We did some plein air painting, as you know. We were just had a great time going out to the coastal areas to do some plein air painting. This is what we brought back. We brought back some great information. We brought back all of the fun that we had. So now when we're in the studio, when we're working on our painting now, our painting of this scene right here and this scene right here, we took pictures. So don't forget, we're taking pictures out there with our cell phone. So I took pictures with my cell phone of this scene. We captured this out there on location. Beautiful colors. We got the colors that we needed. We got some of the really nice um, lay of the land, the uh, sand dunes, the water, the beautiful house here. It's a nice mansion along the coastal area, along the ocean. Um, so we're bringing all this information back into the studio. And now we're going to create a finished painting in the studio where it's a little bit more controlled. We have um, everything at our fingertips so we don't have to worry about people distracting us, walking up and asking us what we're doing, all those type of things that you encounter when you're out plein air painting. So let's get started. Um, so this is the photographs that I took of the scene and you can kind of see how that looks. It's um, basically the mansion and uh, there's another house in the distance. I think we're going to leave that out. Again, you're the artist. You leave out things that you might not find that are going to work for you. So if something doesn't work for you, just leave it out. Don't worry about it. Maybe we're just going to have this one mansion on the coastal area that we're going to paint and we don't necessarily have to be slavishly following the exact photograph that we took. We could just say, you know what, let's just paint this picture of this mansion right here and that other mansion over here in the distance. We're just going to let that one kind of disappear in our own uh, creation as we go. And so I was just trying to find something to chalk up the phone with. Here we go. A roll of tape always works. I'll chalk up the phone a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit better. We can see a little bit easier. There we go. Yep, yeah, that looks better. All right, so we're just going to do our pencil sketch. And again, we're going to do the pencil sketch again in the studio here. But now we have all that other information that going for us. Okay, so I'm going to take this and say, all right, about the roof line is going to be about here which is about pro approximately a little bit above two-thirds of the page. And then we're just going to take some light pencil sketch lines and just kind of get the roof line a little bit there. We'll have an, a chimney there eventually. That's our roof line. Then we have some trees. And we are going to, those are the trees over on the other side of this roof. And then we're going to have some trees in front of this here. What I will do though is I think I will um, add in some more, uh, less trees over here. I want to add a little more of the house into this. And this is a gazebo over here we saw on the right hand side. And we had some columns on that, so we're going to do the same thing. Columns, four columns maybe. A few over here, a few, one, a couple on that side over there, one over here. Okay, and then we have that there, some more shrubs and things over here, some grass, like that. And I think we're not even going to worry about the bridge. Uh, there was a, actually a dock. We're not even going to worry about the dock that we saw over on the right-hand side. We're just going to go for it here and just do this portion. And then we're going to take our chimney and go up here. Beautiful chimney here, a stone chimney very prominent on this elevation of the house and we have our chimney chase cap and we have a, a, a vent on the top there and, uh, and then we're, we're going to have uh, the rest of our roof over here on the right hand side okay and then over here and, and then we're going to have some more trees. I might make these trees a little more sparse. Maybe some more branches over here on the trees. I want to see more of the house actually. Maybe there's a window over here. We'll put a window over here. And some more trees. Like so. And bushes on this side. And that chimney comes right down like so. So what I'm doing is I'm adding a little more of the house into this painting. When we looked at it here from a photograph, you can kind of see that everything is covered by all trees, pine trees and bushes and things like that. That's sort of like a barrier that these people that own this home put up 
so that they don't have to maybe see the parking lot and all the traffic and the ferry boats and all the people over here that, you know, on our side of things. So basically where we're sitting, we're in like a parking lot. There's cars, there's restaurants, all kinds of things like that. The people probably put a nice, beautiful barrier of gorgeous trees all on their property just to just give themselves more privacy. But we want to kind of see a little more of the house here, uh, the beautiful house. We've got a mansion actually here. It's quite large, probably 5,000 square feet. It's huge. Um, we're going to kind of put this on the um, the paper the way we want to do it. We're going to take our creativity and say, let's make it a little different. That's all. And so we're just going to leave a little more of the house showing on this painting, on this painting here in particular. We did it just like we saw it out in the field, but now we're going to change it a little bit as we're back in the um, studio. So we have that there, and then we have some rocks over here. So we're going to put those rocks in, of course. And there's some lawn here, some beautiful lawn, and there's some bushes along here. And then uh, we have uh, the, the sand dunes here, some grass. And then we have the rocks over here, so let's get the rocks in. And then the rocks are very random, but they do have an angle to them. They're kind of angling this way a little bit. They do have that little bit of an angle to them because I think that's the way they actually set them when they were building these uh, these uh, um, bulkhead walls here. So when the waves come crashing in and the storms and the hurricanes, plenty of stones up here to buffer those waves from crashing into the property here on this gorgeous mansion. And then we have uh, more rocks here. So we're just going to put those rocks in randomly. And I'm just trying to look at them and kind of see how they look and they kind of do have those angles to them like that. Perfect. I think that looks good and there's some grass over here. Some grass and then there's a little bit of some sand down here. And there's some sand dunes here like that. And there's some grass like this. Here's some weeds and things. And then there's even some more, uh, let's see if we can find an eraser. It's always good to have a kneaded eraser if you can find it. I'm going to try to find my kneaded eraser. Let's see. My studio is kind of in disarray right now. There we go. So my studio is in disarray because I'm actually re renovating my studio. So I'm doing different things to it and so I'm trying to have one of my new needed erasers here. Let me see if I can... So yeah, this is fine. These are the um, Faber-Castell needed erasers. These are great. They're nice and soft. They don't make any crumbs so when you erase you don't have to worry about crumbs all over your table or your crumbs getting into your watercolor painting. That's all. That's why I always, you know, swear by using the um, uh, kneaded erasers, actually. They're really, they work great. So I'll just do a little bit of erasing over here because I wanted to make this more, maybe some more bushes over here and things that I can see in the... And we can use these, maybe we'll make a pine tree over here, why not? pine trees, they pretty much, the branches go straight out level, like so. A couple go up and angle upwards, some angle downwards too. But I figured I would do a little pine tree over here too, maybe, just to have a little interesting, different look. So we're going to just pack a lot of good information into this painting that we're doing right now. And I think we have enough information there with our pencil sketch. Um, we have the rocks of the jetty here, of actually the um, retaining wall we have along here. Uh, we have some sand, some sand dunes here. We have, the again, uh, some weeds and grasses along here. We have the front lawn of this mansion here. We have the actual mansion itself with its beautiful chimney. Maybe I'll race out that little bit of that line there on the chimney. And uh, we have the beautiful roof, the nice red, gorgeous red roof there. That goes red shingles. And we have a gazebo here, some red shingles with the gazebo and some... Um, tree foliage along the back side of that 
um, gazebo roof. And then here we have a little bit of a some shrubs along the back of that gazebo. So we're going to remember to paint around the columns. We don't want to paint over the columns. We want to leave those columns um, white like the picture shows. They're actually stone. So those are stone. This chimney is stone. This house is stucco. So we have some windows on there. And I think that's pretty good. I think we have enough information here. We'll get ready to paint just in a second. And um, I'm so happy that you're here. Um, we'll put some more trees over here. Maybe a couple trees in the distance here. Like that. I'm glad you're here painting along with me. And again, we've had so much fun on this video. I'm hoping, and I'm hoping you're really enjoying this video. And if you are, please thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed on the right-hand side below. Uh, this way we just kind of know if you really enjoy this kind of content. Like we're doing this uh, a little bit different. We're doing plain air painting. So this is not my, you know, standard format that I use. And I'm not changing my standard format. We're always going to do our studio paintings all the time, week after week, month after month, year after year. We're going to continue to practice in the studio. But once in a while, let's get out. Let's do some plain air painting. Let's go on location, our backyard, uh, the local park nearby. Maybe we take a little vacation. We do a little painting out uh, on our vacations or our weekend getaways. Next thing you know, we have a lot of fun experiences that we're going to bring back into the studio from our sketchbooks. And that's this is what this is about. Beautiful sketchbook paintings. Again, we just did this one live just a few minutes ago. And we saw how much fun we had doing this, sitting in a beautiful lawn chair, taking in the ocean breezes, the coastal areas, the fun, the birds flying around, the seagulls, people on the beach, um, all the fun, the breezes, everything, the whole experience. We're going to bring that back. And now we're bringing that excitement right here. So this is what it's all about, bringing the excitement from the outdoors and being out in uh, the beautiful nature, the energy, and then bringing it back and putting it right here on our canvas when we're in the uh, studio. So let's uh, pick it up in just a second. We'll start painting now in two seconds. All right, we are back, everybody. We're getting excited. We're now at the final stages of our painting in our studio version of the original painting we did here on the um, plein air painting excursion we've uh, uh, gone on in our watercolor journey. So uh, watercolor is a journey. And then maybe for some of you, many of you, maybe even you've been following me for a long time and I really haven't covered plein air painting all that much. And now I'm going to start to cover it a little more and we're going to go out and do more plein air painting. Maybe if in this comment section you say, hey, Chris, we're not too happy about going on plein air paintings on your videos. We like the regular videos better. Maybe I won't, you know, share as much uh, new videos about plein air painting, but I'm thinking many of you probably do like this. You do like to see what what happens when we go outdoors and many of you are going to get excited and kind of go out and do some outdoor painting yourselves and I'm, that's what I'm really hoping you will do. And uh, so let's get started here. We're just going to finish up our studio painting. Of course, uh, that's when, where the best paintings happen is when you're in the studio. But you can do gr really fun things out in the field, uh, gathering information, gathering colors, sketching, getting the feel of the nature bringing that all back to your studio. And then when you come back to your studio and you're kind of concentrating on really getting your pa painting down onto your watercolor paper, you're going to have all that good feelings of, oh, that was so much fun going out there. And I met this person and talked to that person. And there was some really beautiful s sunset that I saw after I was done painting. And you'll have all this storyline behind the uh, painting that you're doing that it's going to translate into a much better painting. Uh, a lot of times. So you will bring back a lot of good energy is what I'm saying when you're doing your plein air painting. But you can do just a, you know, you can do beautiful paintings without going out and doing plein air painting or sketchbook painting, I should say. But this just adds to some more fun and more excitement and more energy that you can utilize as an artist. And that's what you have to ask yourself as an artist. Do I want to do this? Do I want to try um, painting, uh, plein air painting? And I think you will. And so we're going to get into our colors here. We're going to do burnt sienna, burnt umber, a cadmium red, cerulean blue. Uh, where's a cerulean blue? Did this disappear on me through other paints? Yes, it did. We'll use cobalt blue. That'll work. We'll use cobalt blue. I think my, yeah, my cerulean blue is underneath this green. Let's see if we can 
repair this really quick. Uh, let me do a quick thing here. Let me see. Okay, I'm just going to try to lift up some of this green so I can get my cerulean blue. So I'll just lift up some of this green out of here. I really need that cerulean blue. I, I use cerulean blue all the time. It's like my really my favorite blue. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm just going to use my normal techniques here. I have a tissue in case I need to dry off my brush a little bit. And then now we're just going to start. Let's get our maybe some raw umber too. Let's, so we're going to use cadmium red, raw umber, burnt sienna, burnt umber. A little mixture of the uh, warm colors, our earth colors. Then we're also going to um, dry off the brush after we rinse the brush and we'll get some blue. Warm and cool everywhere, so you want to add some cool colors to your warmer colors, your red colors. And that's what we're going to do. And we'll go back in and predominantly we're going to use the warm colors here on the roof because you can see those are definitely, you know, the red roof shingles. So we want to make sure we really uh, key in on that beautiful red color there. It's kind of like a brick red. And so we're excited about that color and we're like, wow, looking good. And then here we kind of just, you know, dance the brush around a little bit because we're going to start putting some tr greens of this tree up into the roof area. So we're just going to remember to not completely fill that in with some red roof shingles there. Uh, look how good that looks and that's pretty much there we go we have the roof completed and um let's see let's start again we'll, maybe we'll mix some greens in here we'll have our sap green and some yellow ochre sap green yellow ochre maybe a little bit of burnt sienna in there too and we'll splash a little bit we'll have to add a little more water to our mix over here to get some splashes going so sometimes you have to get some more um water into your to your mixture on your palette to get your splashing going because if you have too if you have not enough water on your paintbrush you sometimes won't be able to get those splashes going so if you want to get your splashes going you have to add a little more water make your your mix on your palette a little bit you know a little more water less paint and then I'll use a little finger painting technique there too and there we go we have a gorgeous almost like an olivey green color there we get some more sap green let's get some sap green going let's mix the colors let's get uh, a little bit of cadmium let's cadmium yellow lemon I always mix that up it's sometimes I say cadmium lemon yellow sometimes I say cadmium yellow lemon and I think it is cadmium yellow lemon You'll tell me in this comment section if I have that correct, please, someone. Okay, so now we have some gorgeous greens going for our trees. Um, some more bushes over here. Like that. We can add in some of the reds, too, to our... So let's do that. Let's make sure we add in some red to our bushes here, just so it kind of harmonizes with the roof colors here. That'll be better. And uh, sap green, yellow ochre. Okay, and again if you have a little bit of an issue getting some good splashes, you just gotta add a little more water. So we'll do sap green, yellow ochre, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, dip our paint uh, paintbrush in the water and add a little bit of water to that so we can kind of see that we got a little more water going there. 
and then we just tap on our brush and we'll get some more of those splashes going. And rinse off the brush, dry off the paint, uh, the water off the brush a little bit. And then we just can kind of move some of the paint around like this. And it's also good, get some cerulean blue into your I would say let's do that. Let's get some cerulean blue into our greens here and there just so we have that warm and cool feel. And over here, wow, we're going to have some fun. We're going to do a pine tree right now. Let's do a pine tree. And you're going to probably say, how do we do a pine tree? I'll show you how we do it and it's so much fun. We take some French ultramarine blue. Wow, look how that's a really dark blue. Oh, that's a really, you know, the tone the tone of a French ultramarine blue is very, 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 very strong, dark, you know. And we'll take some sap green, mix that in with that. And then you see how, wow, that looks great. And then some burnt sienna, too. A little bit of burnt sienna in there. And, that, and then a little more green. So we want the green and the blue really to be the most strong color there, colors. But we do want to have a little bit of that burnt sienna in there, too. Then I'll just... I'll get my needlepoint brush and we'll get that going with our needlepoint brush. Here you can see how fine this is. And then we're just going to sort of get those pine tree shapes going, which are upstrokes. And then they also, a lot of times, pine trees. They definitely have a lot of branches that are out sort of level like this. So the branches aren't really going up on an angle like this. They kind of, they're kind of like level. They go almost like straight out from the trunk of the tree. And then we just take a few splotches of paint like that just to kind of fill it in. And then what we'll do is, after we do that, then we'll come back in with our normal round brush and we'll get more of that sap green, cadmium lemon yellow, cadmium lemon uh, yellow lemon, and we will just touch in some colors like that for the bushes in front of that tree there. And then we'll make some more colors for the lawn here. So let's do the colors for the lawn. The front lawn is kind of that beautiful, lively looking green for the grass across here. Then we're going to go across here, more red. We're going to do the gazebo roof. Let's get that going in there. And this is a little bit. lighter on the right hand side over here so we're going to do a lighter so the lights coming from this direction you can kind of see the the light on this roof on the gazebo roof kind of gives us the indication that the light is coming from the right hand side of the painting this way so that'll give us that little bit of feeling of um, light coming from the right hand side And then we'll do a little bit of we'll do the chimney colors like that. And then we have sort of a orangey. Let's add some orange for the side uh, for the stucco. It looks like there's some stucco on this building and some red. And we are really coming along beautifully. Let's keep going here. Maybe we'll get some more of that green that we use for the um, pine tree and let's kind of get some of these cooler greens over here, which are in the distance, with a little bit of cerulean blue maybe.
like that. So we'll just use a little bit of a cooler green there. And then we're going to do some more greens over here for our shrubs. And these are going to be around the... Uh, we're painting negative shape painting. Remember we say negative shape painting is when you paint around the subject matter. You paint around it with your color, your darker colors usually. And then your columns appear. So can you see how our columns are appearing now on this gazebo? Because we're kind of painting the darks around them. And that really gives us a great effect there we can capitalize on. There we go. And a little bit over here too. So that gives us a good feeling of... And there's some more trees in the background there. And some greens. So. That looks pretty good. And then some more blues and greens over here. Cerulean blue. And then maybe some some ocean color there. Maybe we'll do some blue. Let's do some cobalt blue. Like that. Cobalt blue to denote the ocean color. Maybe a little bit of green. And let's take a break. We've painted a lot already. So we've got quite a bit of our painting completed. Um, let's um, take a break. We'll Next we'll get we'll go in and do the rocks here which should be pretty quick with sand and some weeds and grasses along here and then we'll do the sky last but I think you're kinda of seeing how this is all coming together looking really good for us again we have a little more um, comfortability in the studio to kinda of carry out our techniques and our methods that we use in watercolor so no need to um, think that we can't paint great paintings in the studio. Actually, that's where our greatest paintings are completed, is in the studio. Um, but we can get some energy from the outdoor painting, too, so let's kind of incorporate both when we can. Okay, so let's come right back in just a few minutes, and we'll continue finishing this painting up. It's a beautiful painting we're doing right now, and I think it looks just fantastic, and it's utilizing all the information that we brought back to our studio from the plain air excursion we had okay so let's finish up in just a few minutes okay we'll get the sky done and the foreground done with the sand and the rocks all right so we're getting back here again uh, maybe I'll see if I can zoom in a little bit here I, I apologize if I haven't zoomed in as much as I can I try to get as much as I can zooming in here that might be a little better. Yep, that's better. And then we're going to do the rock wall. So we're going to move over this way, like that. All right, so that's better. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's get this rock wall in here. What are we going to use for the rock wall? The same colors. We're not going to really change. Cerulean blue. French ultramarine blue, maybe for some of that darker blue. Um, some yellow ochre. And I think we uh, can get a pretty good cobalt blue, maybe too. And some raw umber. And I think that's good. We can get some really good colors here. So what I'll do is I'll start to just follow my, the, the thing here, let's, let's keep in mind, once you do your sketch of your rocks, then you use that pencil sketch that you did to get your um, colors and your tones, your tonal values going in it, in that section that you're doing for the rocks. So I noticed that the rocks, the light is coming from this way, so the shadows are going to be on the left side of the rocks, the darker shadows. So you can kind of see that, how I'm just doing the left sides of the rocks here. 
and then once I get the left side of the rocks completed with that shadow then I can kind of go in and add the um, more of that golden color and we add the golden color on the right side and kind of blend it up with the and I'm using a smaller brush as you can see I shifted over to a number four Da Vinci um, Maestro travel brush so all I did was really I'm just trying to if you haven't seen my if you type in uh, Chris Petri uh, rocks painting rocks you'll see that I did some videos on painting rocks here and there once in a while over the years over the last five years I've done a number of paintings on rocks so you could look at those videos to practice on some rocks if you wanted to before you try doing these rocks in this painting because it really does make it a, a better painting if our rocks come out more accurate so again I kind of wanted to share that with you I definitely sometimes if you if you sometimes if we practice up on things before we go in and do a finished painting uh, on some of the details of what we're painting it definitely helps because then it's almost like when you go in and do your finished painting you're like oh yeah I just practiced that you know a couple days ago or last week or a few weeks ago and I kind of have a feel for it already so when you go in and do it it comes out a little much better actually so that's just a little tidbit of information I like to share when we're here and we're doing our paintings but I think that's those are the rocks and we'll leave those just the way they are and we'll keep working our way over this way there's a few more rocks over here French ultramarine blue so we'll just keep going in with the same colors French ultramarine blue raw umber and then we'll get some more of these darks over here and then I use a tissue to dry off my brush as I go so sometimes too much water is going to cause us to uh, have an issue yellow ochre so we're using yellow ochre for the warmer sunny side of the rocks and then for the cooler side of the rocks we're using more of the blue or darker tonal values and that's really just the basics of it and again once you draw those rocks in with your pencil drawing you kind of have everything where you need it and you just have to add your darks on the the left side of the rocks and that usually will help you to get right through that section here that we're doing and it looks good all right so that's pretty good now we'll take um, our larger brush again and this is a number uh, eight travel brush and we'll get uh, we'll just maybe wipe off our palette a little bit and we'll get some more yellow ochre there with a little bit of water, a little bit of cerulean blue at the bottom of that. And then we're just going to do the same thing we did when we originally did the paint, first part of the painting. We want to add some splashes for the sand feel right along the sand area like this. And then we just take our brush and kind of hold our brush like this and just kind of take the brush or you can hold it this way like this or like this any which way you, but you just kind of want to use the side of the brush so you don't want to use the the tip of the brush like this you want to use the side of the brush the underside of the brush and you just want to lightly drag it across the paper and that gives you that nice feeling of the movement of the paint brush strokes going across giving that feel of the sand dune sloping like this that's really a lot of times if you can get your brush to move the way um, the ground is moving or you know the flow of the ground the pitch of the ground the angle if you kind of get that with your brush doing the same idea you're just automatically gonna get success with that type of brush stroke with what you're trying to get you know convey to your to the people that are looking at your paintings um, some people might say oh you have to get the color right but yeah you have to get the color right but if you can get that that feeling of the ground moving like this that's really going to go a long way and then here we're going to do the same thing we'll take some green sap green cadmium lemon yellow 
and we'll dry off the brush a little bit like this and then we'll do the same thing. Now we'll take our brush and we'll go up like this. And then we'll even try to get a little more sap green in there and raw umber maybe. Raw umber, sap green, maybe a little bit of a darker tone of value. Dry off the brush a little bit and do the same thing. Try to get some upstrokes going this way. That's all. Like this. F quick flicks up. If you have to move your palette a little bit, you do that. And you can kind of see how when you do those quick upstrokes like that, you really do get a nice feel as if there's things growing like weeds and things going upwards. You could take your um, uh, needlepoint brush again too and get some more of the um, raw umber uh, dry, maybe I would make a drier mix for this. I would dry this off, the palette off a little bit, get some raw umber in there, straight paint, no water, straight paint, no water, raw umber, sap green, and then you can also do some wisps of grass here in the foreground, right? So closer to us this way, so closer to us this way, we'd want to have some of these details like this. So this gives us the feeling of, wow, yeah, there's, there's stuff close by, right close to us here, um, like this. You can do some wisps of grass like that. Then you can, as you go further into the painting this way, you can do a few more over here. You want to, you wouldn't see these fine lines that we're doing right now over here on the distant areas, but only close to us right here you would see these. And that's all you need is just a little bit of detail like that. And then maybe a little bit of splashing too. Just a little more over here. Maybe we take a little bit of a darker raw umber, yellow ochre, raw umber, yellow ochre. Dry off the brush on a paper towel or a um, tissue and see if we can get a, a darker bit there. Here, let's see that? Wow! Again, we're trying to get that flow going of the sand dune like this. And then, again, let's do a little more, add a little touch of water to that and we'll do some more a little bit of blue, a little bit of cerulean blue mixed in there. And then we just get a couple more splashes going. There we go. And that looks pretty good. Let's get some sky wash in here and we're going to be completed. And I'm not going to take a, a really, um, you know, I'm not going to go too much more. I'll get some, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a darker window color here. So I just want to get some of that window in there. There you go. We go. Just to get some dark window shadow colors there. And then let's get some uh, cerulean blue mixed in there. Then what we'll do is we'll add some water. Add some, a little bit of that muddy water we have in the palette, uh, in the uh, water pail. If your water pail has water that's not exactly perfectly crystal clear, that's okay. You have to look at it though. So I looked at it first and said, oh yeah, it's not too, too muddy looking. It's, it's only got a little bit of color in it, a little bit of, you know, muddiness to it and that's perfect for me because I'm going to say I'm going to utilize that because it has all the colors we've been using throughout the whole painting which means it's going to perfectly harmonize with the rest of the painting. That's my sky and then if I want to yes I can go in and get a little more of a darker wash and just do this. Maybe a little darker up here. Maybe we go in with a little bit of cobalt blue like that. right at the top I like to make it a little bit darker. Sky is always darker up top when you're looking at the sky. Like that. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this painting. This is our finished painting. We had so much fun throughout this video and um, again if you like this type of video we'll do more. We'll do more just like this. 
and it's not pretty much it's the same amount of time that we usually spend on a painting in the studio except we added a little bit of time out in the field in the in the um, plein air um, plein air uh, situation so that uh, Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate on here. I want a little bit of the darks up here, like that. Just gives it a little bit of extra excitement when you have a little bit of the darks up at the top, like that. The only thing I would do uh, to finish up is I'll let this dry and I'll just add a few, maybe a few darks. Maybe the uh, chimney cap will do a little bit of a dark there. Maybe we'll splash on some stone stone type feelings here on the on the stones of the. So I'm going to try to add a little bit of stone. I think we have a little bit of that there. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of stonework to this chimney once this dries. Maybe we'll come back in just a minute and just do the final final details to this painting so that we, we get the 100% um, quality of doing this painting 100% as we, we finish up. Okay, so we'll be right back. We'll finish up every last detail that we can before we call this a finished painting. Okay, so be back in just a second. Okay, we're going to finish up now with our final details. So usually when we're doing um, the uh, more uh, really fine lines and um, last bits of our painting, you know, we want to use smaller brushes. So I'm going to use either uh, the needlepoint brush or this uh, small travel brush number four, uh, Da Vinci Maestro travel brush. Um, so let me see. I think I can probably, um, let's see, here. let's use the needlepoint brush actually up here. So I'm going to use some, uh, best thing to do is actually, uh, I usually dry off my palette in the section I'm going to do my final details because usually those are we need like mostly dark paint not much uh, not much uh, lighter washes we need usually some darker darker tonal values so I'll just use straight paint with just uh, like the dampness of the the uh, water in the brush actually and then to make doubly sure I don't add too much water to my details, I, I dry off the tips of the brush with the whatever brush I'm using. I usually dry off on the tissue, the uh, tip of the brush. There you go. This way, because it's really important with watercolor. One of the biggest advantages you have as a watercolorist is understanding that when you're working with like damp paper or wet washes on your paper that you've already worked on, and I use the blow dryer, and, and now this paper is very very dry, but there could be some damp paper on here still. So when you go in you and you're doing your final dark details to this, you'd always want to make sure you dry your brush off quite a bit. You can always go in and get some more paint, but if you go in with too much paint and water on your brush and you touch down onto your paper and all of a sudden it's too much water, you'll see that it it starts to flow everywhere and it makes kind of a mess. So that's why I, I'll just really dry off the brush almost to, so there's almost, almost zero paint on there. And then we'll leave it just like that. And then we also leave that little highlight on the top of the chimney cap there. That's real important. You know, there's some light coming across here and that makes that chimney cap there, uh, the, um, the, um, the vent on top of the chimney, it kind of makes it lighter on the top and then it's darker underneath where the shadows are. So that's real important. And then I do a little shadow under here too. There's another bit of a cap on top of that chimney. There's a shadow there, and then there's some shadows under under the gazebo too. So I'll do some shadows under the gazebo, and these little darks, these little dark bits, really do help the painting to look better. So you can kind of see. We'll see if I can bring this down a little bit like that, and then I think if we do that, some darker darks under here too looks good. There's some dark darks under there. 
and I make sure I paint around those columns. I don't want to paint over those columns and that looks good. So again we're negative shape painting. We paint around the columns. Those white columns there we paint around them and then they appear and they look really good because we can see them. They're definite. They're a prominent feature in the painting for this gazebo. And uh, what else do we have here? We have a little more I would just make some more green along here. And that ocean color looks pretty good here along this. That blue, I put some beautiful cobalt blue in there. And that's sort of just, that just sort of keys in the viewer of our artwork. So someone who's looking at your painting is going to definitely feel like, yeah, that's the ocean over there. I can see that. If you want to lighten it up a little bit, you can take a tissue and just do a quick dab there. If you want to lighten that up a little bit and not make it as dark as I did. That still looks good though. That still looks like ocean water to me. And then um, you can take some yellow ochre here and then add a little bit of yellow ochre there for some sand. And then maybe we can just I would like to make these uh, this window a little bit sharper looking, like that. So we have a window over here, we make that really sharp looking. So you can really see the uh, right angles there on the edges of the windows, the corners of the windows. And uh, that looks pretty good. You can always dab up a little bit of paint if you want to make it lighter and then go back in and Maybe make a little shadow under there, under the underside of the window where the uh, where you might have a little bit of a shadow on the window underneath there, where the wall is above it. And what else? That's it. I think that's perfect. I think everything looks just right. I don't think we need to do anything else. We have our rocks. We have our sand in the foreground. We have weeds. We have grass, bushes and trees along the front of this. Beautiful, gorgeous mansion here with our gazebo and beautiful stone chimney. I think we have everything looking perfect. I think this is a completed painting. I'll zoom in just a little bit. There we go. And I hope you enjoyed again this video. Again, please thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, always subscribe if you're just new here and this is the first time you've seen my videos. You're probably like, wow, this has been some crazy uh, tour we've had here. <laughs> so if, any, if anything, you'll probably come back. You'll subscribe and come back for more and uh, have some more fun with us here. But we are having fun at least with our watercolor painting. And let's uh, continue on in the same way. And uh, again, we're not changing our format here. This is just a kind of a, a new format I'm going to have where I'm going to put in some uh, paintings that we're going to do plain air outdoors and uh, I had some new gear I bought our new GoPro camera so you saw some video with my GoPro camera uh, just got that I'm really excited about it it works absolutely phenomenal so if anyone's out there and you're you want to take some of your um, take uh, you know some videos of your uh, plain air trips yourself that you're going out on the GoPro camera I have a GoPro it's an 11 black it's called the uh, GoPro 11 black it works just phen phenomenal. So, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube to learn how to use it. So you don't have to feel like you're not going to be able to learn how to use the thing. It's really kind of like, there's great videos out there on, on YouTube to learn how to use your GoPro 11 black. If you do decide to get one, but I'm thinking you're probably going to want to have uh, something like that. Or maybe you're just going to use your cell phone. Uh, cell phones work great too. I have a video camera on my cell phone and I do use that also when I go out and do plein air painting. But in any case, Thanks again so much for coming by. Let's uh, meet up again really, really soon. And uh, we'll keep uh, continuing our art journey together. And um, happy painting, everyone.